Okay, right before I listened to this radio drama, I listened to the Betty Davis one, which I just found really mm, not good. And um, it kind of soured me on the idea of continuing, but I was like, it's got Vincent Price. I'll do pretty much anything for Vincent Price, so I'll try it. So I did, and hallelujah, I... Whew, Vincent Price did not disappoint me. Not that I expected he would. As soon as I heard that Vincent Price did a Rochester, I was like, okay, yes, I am there. Sign me up. It's funny, in part one, I mentioned that Betty Davis did another movie where she was a governess who falls in love with the father of the children, and he has a problem wife. Well, Vincent Price also did a movie with Gene Tierney called Dragonwick. Gene Tierney played a governess who comes and takes care of his kid and falls in love with him and he has a problem wife and it's very gothic and creepy and wow, what are the chances of that happening? Anyway, this version was recorded in 1950. It was done by the Family Theater. I think they have some sort of Christian affiliation because before and after the radio drama, they had an, not an advertisement, they had an encouragement to people to pray together as a family. So that was interesting. Now, it was so weird because I, I was piggybacking this off of listening to the Betty Davis one, who put on a pretty waif-like performance, and that was what I expected from Donna Reed, but that was not what I got. She is, she's very mature sounding, direct, quick. Her delivery is very fast, keeps the story moving, sometimes at kind of like a breakneck speed, but it was, it was fine. Yeah, they cut things out. It's also a half hour long and it starts with the horse scene, which was like, oh my goodness, oh, wow. <laughs> okay. There were things about this script that instantly put it ahead of the other one, such as gypsy scene. Yay. Vincent Price being the old gypsy woman was hilarious. Um, he doesn't make a very good old woman voice. It is very screechy, croaky, something. Um, and it was so obviously him. And it was, uh, it was just so much canon. Uh, and, um, the multiple good nights after the fire scene, and Mason was in there, so, yep. Got that check automatically better than the Betty Davis Brian Ahern version. <laughs> the visit to her aunt is glossed over, and I'm not even sure if it was her aunt or somebody else, but she does go, and then she comes back, and Rochester is very excited, and, oh man, I hate to just go, like, fangirling on and on about Vincent Price, but he just was really... <sighs> he really conveyed a lot of the different emotions. Maybe he wasn't quite as brusque and cranky pants and mm, sometimes taciturn as Rochester should be. And he actually came across as surprisingly lighthearted sometimes. But, um, I don't know. The depth of his performance in just this little radio show really struck me and... I applaud him for putting that much oomph into it. Really, the pros outweighed the cons. It succeeds where the other one failed. The scene where she comes back, I, it was just much more satisfying than the other version. He puts a lot more into his performance. I would have liked to see him acting it out, like see a side-by-side -side comparison, because it kind of seems like Brian Ahern was just reading it. Whereas Vincent Price, it feels like He's acting it out over the microphone, and he's very active and emotional, and I like the lines that they use. And they include the point that in time Rochester regains his sight, and they attribute it to God being both merciful and just. And I think that's an important thing to include, and I do notice it when they cut that out. So... Maybe I'm a little bit more into this version than your average person would be and biased because of my liking for Vincent Price, but his performance and Donald Reed's performance and the script, they just 
made this a good version, I thought. So that's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. 